2019 surprise hot new trend in blockbuster filmmaking appears to be ideas that sound like or were parody sketches in trailer form, but they're trailers for actual not a joke but the real thing movies. Starting with what if Dora the Explorer, but now it's Tomb Raider. I have to keep going no matter what. She's freaking awesome. Boots! Of course, she knows this monkey. And continuing with Joaquin Phoenix in Joker, a serious-minded prestige drama that reimagines a new origin story for a Batman villain apparently playing out in a grounded, realistic world without a Batman or any other superheroes, villains, or powers. Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? Smile, though your heart is aching, smile, even though it's breaking. And it looks fine? Kind of potentially good, I guess? I used to think that my life was a tragedy. Now I realize it's a comedy. I don't know, this is such a bizarre idea, you kind of expect it to be either incredible or a disaster, and instead this looks, you know, like another dozen totally average movies about bitterly self-involved white guys going nuts and taking out their shit on a world that have descended in an unbroken line from Taxi Driver and the like since the late 70s and early 80s. I mean, I'm not saying it can't work as what it's trying to be, but apart from the clown makeup gimmick, you have to question what actually makes this a story that was demanding to be told again. The last half century of filmmaking is positively drowning in characters like this. I'm almost given to question whether trying to divorce the Joker, or at least the Hannibal Lecter by way of of Tom Ripley's psychopath mastermind version that's been popular from the 80s onward from the Batman mythology is ultimately misguided in the same way that trying to do the realistic standalone Punisher movies was, i.e. the Punisher isn't really an original character very much outside of seeing a character like that interacting with superheroes. Now look, I get it, the king of comedy but now even more like Taxi Driver and it's the Joker is not an illogical place to go with it. <laughs> Okay, since I know even in film school they only make you watch three Scorsese movies now and none of them are this one and it's never on TV anymore. The King of Comedy was a dark comedy released in 1982. It stars Robert De Niro as a mentally unstable, struggling stand-up comic named Rupert Pupkin who takes a late-night talk show host played by Jerry Lewis, who's actually really good in this, by the way, hostage in order to force him to let Rupert perform a televised set on his TV show. Though not a box office success in its day, it's come to be thought of as an underappreciated work in the filmography of all involved and depending on who you ask, is often suggested to have inspired in some way both Alan Moore's hypothetical failed comedian Joker origin from the Killing Joke story and the Joker-centric Batman the Animated Series episode make him laugh, so yeah. With this, but it also feels like we're going to a place where we're either supposed to like Joker or even sympathize with him, or that whole circa 2008 edgelord meme bullshit about how when you grow up you realize the Joker is the one who makes more sense, which is just the most exhaustingly idiotic take from just the most tiresome kind of fanboy. Well, maybe second most tiresome after the ones who are still protesting the studio to blow millions to finish the even worse version of Justice League. I am so tired. Now look, I get how the Joker ended up gradually turning into one of these characters charismatic psychopath characters that Hollywood and popular fiction have both been way too in love with for the last 50 or 60 years or so, even as the character originally was more just a gangster, professional criminal type with a strange facial deformity and a mystery as to where he came from and why he looked like that. He became the Batman villain pretty much because he was the original gimmick bad guy in Batman number one. The whole scary clown gimmick always kind of works historically, and they really did hold fast to the whole we're keeping the backstory a mystery business, apart from at one point revealing he'd previously been an unheard of villain called the Red Hood who fell in some acid and that that probably explained the clown face stuff, but nothing else before that. So he was enough of an open book to never really go out of style and fit pretty much wherever they wanted to put it. And then when it became trendy to turn as many top-tier recurring comic book villains as possible from gangsters, bank robbers, and mad scientists who like to play dress-up into just straight-up serial killers in the 80s who also like to play dress-up, Joker was one of the easiest of the big guns to make that happen with because, you know, murder clown was a thing that had actually happened in real life a few times by then. And then Killing Joke happened, and that was pretty much the default Joker persona ever since even though it doesn't really hold up all that well, and even Alan Moore considers it one of his lesser works. Or at least the version that every other version seems to use as a jumping-off point. But the funny thing about Killing Joke, whatever else you can say about it, is it's one of the only versions of this whole egomaniacal psychopath monologuing about his personal philosophy routine that really understands that type of person in an honest way, because despite so many fanboys only taking a surface-level appreciation of how gritty and violent the story was, and what an edgy move it was to cripple and maybe, maybe not off-camera sexually assault Batgirl, and what a badass this made the Joker, and by extension Batman,
Batman himself for fighting him. The whole overriding point that Killing Joke not only keeps hammering at in the backstory, the origin, the content of Joker's speechifying, and even the whole denouement that it builds to is that the Joker, like every other smarmy, disaffected nihilist who thinks they've cracked the code of life by virtue of detachment, is actually just kind of pathetic. If you only know it by reputation, the plot of The Killing Joke involved Joker abducting Commissioner Gordon and tormenting him with a slideshow of Joker and his henchmen shooting and mutilating his daughter Barbara, aka Batgirl. Intercut with this and Batman's attempt to rescue Gordon, we get flashbacks to what may be Joker's actual origin as a failed stand-up comic whose crummy but not that unhappy life completely falls apart through a series of dumb random accidents all on the same day that he's tricked into wearing the Red Hood costume by some crooks and falls into the acid because he's frightened by Batman, completing his descent into madness and turning him into the Joker. The hook, though, is that we are seeing this origin because Joker's torture of Gordon is meant to be a demonstration, proving what has apparently been the premise of Joker's whole otherwise random career of disconnected crimes, schemes, etc. over the years. That life and the world are random and cruel and pointless, and anyone, even a fine upstanding citizen like Gordon, is just one bad day with enough trauma in it away from snapping just like he did. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, why would Joker care about proving anyone could turn into Joker if he supposedly doesn't feel guilt about being the Joker? Well, pour yourself an extra drink, you just understood the point of this book better than most most of the people who claim to love it. Because it didn't work. He's not broken, everyone isn't one step away from being the Joker, and he probably wasn't just a regular perfectly good guy with nothing wrong with him, even if he did get a raw deal that day. And as Batman points out, all the grandiose how-I-see-the-world bullshit the Joker has been lecturing about the whole time is actually really dumb, just a bunch of edgy, angry teenage crap that every smug crank with delusions of grandeur thinks they're the first person to figure out. He even starts in on World War II was caused by telegraph poles and German war debt in case you were worried they'd be too subtle about this. But I I mean, really, to miss this, you'd have to be one of those people who doesn't get that Fight Club isn't about emasculated, overcompensating, white-collar dweebs secretly being charismatic, sexy, badass god-kings, but rather about said badass god-kings not existing and just being emasculated, overcompensating dweebs you should never listen to, and also, you know, the Project Mayhem guys were literally skinheads. Like a monkey ready to be shot into space. Space monkey. Ready to sacrifice himself for the greater good. And yeah, that tends to be the same dude who misses the point here, and even though more than a few of them are good, I really have a hard time, especially at this particular moment in time, not to put too fine a point on it, right? Getting all that excited for another movie where a weird loner rambles about how unfair the world is and how that renders whatever insane shit he's gonna do either reasonable or righteous or whatever. I'm not saying this is gonna be bad, I have no idea. We've seen one trailer, the cast is good, Phoenix is a hell of an actor, Todd Phillips is an interesting director, they got De Niro to come back and do a part in the movie as a shout-out to King of Comedy, I like the reimagine Joker look, and good lord anything is better than more Jared Leto. And it's unfair to hold internet weirdo fanboys who are stupidly obsessed with the Joker character for dumb reasons against a movie. It just feels like one of those instances where someone went to a studio with an interesting idea and got an okay fine, but only if you deliver the least interesting version of it. But I guess we'll find out. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture. Mm -hmm.